Let's go to uh, Ryan Aber, and then we'll go to Eric Bailey. Ryan. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, appreciate you doing this. Wanted to uh, check in and uh, ask you how the, the three Tennessee transfers were doing so far uh, in the spring. Um, how, how those guys uh, fit in with your team and how they look? I would say all three of them have done a great job fitting in with the team. I mean, I give them and our, and our, and our team credit. I mean, that, that transition feels pretty seamless. Uh, which is not always easy on both sides, and so I think that's uh, I think that's been great. Um, uh, as far as on the field, um, you know, I would say both both Eric and, and Key have done a good job. They've they've been able to to practice each day. Uh, Wanya was a little limited uh, with just a minor nick coming in, and so he's just now getting able to to be able to, to go through the bulk of the reps and practice. So um, haven't been able to see quite as much of him yet, uh, but, but all guys have done a nice job. You know, Eric and Kia both, you know, you know, are both explosive, um, uh, you know, really nice skill players. And like I said, we'll, we'll continue to val evaluate one year as we can get some more reps into him. Appreciate it, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Eric Bailey and then Joe Bettner. Hey Lincoln, I uh, just wanted to ask you just about Caleb Williams. How how's he adapting to the offense, and just what has his early leadership qualities been like for you? Well, he's doing well. Uh, you know, I think it's each day gets you know a little bit more comfortable. He, he goes out there, he he makes some plays, he he makes mistakes. You know, we come back in and and correct uh, as as quickly as we can, and uh, and and try to turn it over. And, and I'll give him credit. You know, a lot of the mistakes he's making, he's 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 learning from and and so you know he's he's benefiting from getting a lot of reps right now and like i said you see you see his ability you see some playmaking ability which we we knew he had and uh so it's just a fight and a climb each day uh, to, to get better to learn it to learn his teammates to communicate to execute um but i, I think he's I, i've seen progression uh without a doubt from day one through today he, he gets a little bit better each day and that's that's what i'm looking for Lincoln, appreciate it. Have a good Easter. You too. Joe Bettner and then Jason Kersey. Yeah, Lincoln, I wanted to ask you about Mikey Henderson. Um, obviously, moving over to running back, and I'm sure just the way you use those guys, he's not going to be just limited to that. But how is he adjusting to kind of that new role, and how flexible can he still be with a guy like him with the, his, his skill set? Uh, yeah, you know, we're – he can do a lot of things for us. You know, he played in the backfield a lot for us last year too. So in a lot of ways, you know, what we're doing with him right now is just an extension of that. Uh, so he's, he's doing, you know, he's doing a nice job. I mean, there's, you know, we're trying to push him to make that jump from being a, you know, a guy that was a role player for us and did an outstanding job his first year. But you know, that, that, that jump from becoming a role player to becoming a, a guy that plays a bulk of snaps, is a is not an easy jump you know you've got to you know you got to know the whole offense you know you got to be able to execute a wider variety of assignments um you know understand game plans understand different defensive looks and so that's that's the push right now but he's i think he's i think he's doing pretty well with it you know making some plays as as he's always done and, and getting more consistent with his with his assignments and and becoming a more consistent player without the ball thanks lincoln Jason Kersey, and then Bob Prisbillo. Yeah, Lincoln, I wanted to ask you about Joe John and how he's fit in so far. Um, what's the hardest thing about being a new coach with a new group of players, particularly when the last group or the, the group got along well with Coach Beamer, I, I know, and they really liked working with him. And then also, is that even harder in a pandemic? Um, he, he's, Joe John's doing great. You know, he, he's been – He's been fantastic so far. Um, everything that I, I hoped we would get in the uh, w with the hire. Uh, so he, he's done a really nice job just acclimating with our staff. And a lot of our staff members knew him and have worked with him in other spots. And some of the guys obviously crossed over during his time here at Oklahoma. So uh, it wasn't like we were bringing in a guy that, that nobody knew. Uh, and that's helped. But no, he's great. You know, he brings he brings a great perspective offensively, um, brings a great perspective on the special team side of it. Uh, you know, he's inheriting, a, you know, one of our most experienced groups on the football team, which I think is a, a great thing for a new coach. And no, I think that group's taken to him well. And, you know, just his – he's got a great way about him. And, and then you can certainly, you know, feel that this guy, you know, 
really, really knows tight end play at an elite level. And you can tell that he, you know, that he, he played at an elite level. He's coached at an elite level. Um, so it's been a good, fresh perspective for us in our offensive room uh, as coaches. I think it's been a good, fresh perspective for our, our guys before. And, and then, you know, knowing him, he's, you know, he's a, he's a big relationship guy as well. And he'll, um, you know, he'll do a great job with that group. Okay, let's go to uh, Bob Prisbillo and then Mason Young. Lincoln, is there anything from all the adjustments that you made for COVID-19 in terms of like the way you're running the team and things like that, that you're now carrying over into this spring, like you've now fully incorporated into how you're uh, coaching the team? That's a good question. Um, so yeah, because some of it still f just feels normal now. Um, you know, there's still some things, uh, I guess, from a protocol standpoint, but adjustments just in how we run practices or anything like that, honestly, not really. Uh, and, and to be honest for us, I mean, practices, you know, for the most part for us weren't much different uh, even before. So, you know, we're still limited you know, within the building, what we can do with them, you know, how many people we can put in a meeting room, um, you know, masking in meeting rooms. I mean, kind of all that where we still have those limitations, but I, you know, we're, we're back to meeting in person, you know, full time, which is, which is great. Uh, like I said, practices are kind of, are, are back to normal in a, in a lot of ways. So uh, I wouldn't say anything like directly from COVID that's like just changed the way that we do things now. Mason Young, and then James Hale. Yeah, Lincoln, I was just uh, curious to know what Austin Stogner looks like two weeks into the spring. And with Joe John coaching him, um, just how much does that relatability of having played at OU and also played his position at the highest level um, just benefit that relationship and his growth? Yeah, Stog's, uh, Stog's done well. You know, he's been a little limited for us, um, you know, throughout spring. It's, it's, it's been a, you know, it's been a slow kind of a slow return and I wouldn't say really a slow return off of his injury, but I, there's just, there's some natural ups and downs that you're going to have with that thing that we're, that we're just, that he's going through right now. And so, you know, we don't have him full go for every practice or some days where he feels really good and, and, and does the full, the full deal. Then there's some days where it's just not right. We got to, we got to back it off and, and even shutting down for a period of time. So that's been a little bit of back and forth. You know, Hall and Willis have certainly taken the, the majority of reps um, and, and done a great job with them up to this point. And, yeah, I think, you know, Joe John's experience, you know, having played the position, you know, in different offenses, doing it, in, at, uh, uh, you know, doing it at the NFL level, doing it here at Oklahoma, it, it certainly it's been great for those guys. I mean, there's just, you know, when, when you haven't played a – you know, when you have played a position for as long as he has, there's just little things that you pick up on. Uh, as a player that are hard to, to me, hard to replicate if you haven't played the position. And uh, there's just some of those little things you see with Joe John that, that you could tell, yeah, you can, you could tell he's, he's been in that tight end room for a long time and he's taken a lot of snaps and a lot of, a lot of meetings and just a lot of time invested at it over the years. So I think that'll benefit all three of our tight ends. Let's go to James Hale and then John Hoover. Hi, Lincoln. I hope things are going well. Um, the H-back and tight end position is an incredibly strong position uh, for OU. Uh, you carried on what Bob developed here, and you've actually enhanced it and made it better. You've added Joe John now, who's played the position. I'm curious, as you continue to recruit, is it getting easier to find guys that can play those positions, or are you having to get imaginative to find guys to move them there? Um, you know, because it's not necessarily a glamour position, but it's an incredibly important position for you. Yeah, I, I would say it's not easier to find guys. It's it's probably easier to recruit guys right now uh, because there's, you know, very few people in the country, if any, that are as committed to using those positions as we are. And, right. Uh, and and our recruits see that. I mean, they they see that 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 position's on the field for us every snap. They see for a large a large percentage that we've got two of those guys out there, and not just simply being there, but all the different things that we've done with uh, Dimitri Flowers and Mark Andrews and Carson Meyer, and of course Jeremiah and Braden and Stog, and just kind of all the guys through the years. So those we've just done a lot of things with those guys, and 
and and had a lot of success doing it. So they're, they're still hard to find. It's hard to find guys that mentally we've talked about it a lot is through evaluation and around signing day. I mean, guys that mentally and physically can do all the things we want them to do. There's just not many of them out there in our right. opinion. So, uh, but but we do feel like the guys that we zero in on, you know, that they're going to look at Oklahoma and say, you know, that's a little bit different opportunity than maybe the other ones out there. Thanks, Lincoln. Mm -hmm. John Hoover and then Brandon Drum. Hey, Lincoln. I want to explore Joe John a little bit more. Um, philosophically speaking, when you go to hire a coach, you've done it enough now. You, <clears throat> you've probably established some, some guidelines for yourself. I just wonder, without giving away any secrets, mm -hmm. are there red flags that pop up with guys that you try to stay away from? Are there certain characteristics that really say to you, that's a guy I need to look further at or make some phone calls about? How, how does you go about that process? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, there's, there's, uh, you know, I think for me, it starts as, uh, you know, kind of getting a pool of, of people that I'm interested in, um, which typically I would, I, I would actually walk that back. The first thing I always look for is what, what do I need out of the position? What do we need out of the position? Um, and that changes, you know, that's just because one coach leaves with a certain skill set, that doesn't mean you're always necessarily going to find the carbon copy of that out there. I mean, it's, you know, you got different skill sets on the staff and you, you've got a, I think your job as a head coach to have a feel for what is needed at that time. And uh, so try to identify that and then get a pool of guys. Uh, then at that point, typically, you know, start to run, you know, you know, start to do homework on them and, and look for any of those potential red flags. And yeah, there's, I mean, in this day and age, there's, a million potential red flags that would cause us to say no. And, and we, and have caused us to say no on guys, whether it's something off the field, whether it's, uh, you know, compliance, uh, you know, an NCA uh, violations. I mean, there's, we've, that's, that's certainly happened here. I mean, without a doubt. So um, yeah. And then once we've kind of cleared that in, then, you know, typically, you know, have conversations with a couple of guys and, in a normal in a normal world, you get you get in front of them face to face. Um, and but I, I I normally have a pretty good idea. It doesn't. I, I'm not one of these guys that has to interview ten people. I mean that's that's not not ever really been my style. I don't like doing the token interviews and all that. I mean I, I want to I put myself on the other side. I don't want somebody interviewing me just for the hell of it. You know when I was a young coach, if I had no chance of getting a job, I mean that's a waste of everybody's time. So typically talk to a couple of guys and normally I. Normally, I it's kind of deals when you just know you know, and, and and been lucky, been able to I think land on some some people that have really made a difference here. Okay, Brandon Drum and then Gary Nemig. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, can you talk about the early enrollees? I know you guys are what halfway through the spring bowl right now, uh, and just the, I guess their overall understanding or and their development so far. Yeah, I'd have to say uh, been been pleased with the group so far as a whole um i think physically it's a group that's come in and the majority if not all of them physically are are going to be ready to help this football team win games next year um uh, you know now they they still have a lot of development physically to go but there's not in, there's not really to me, anybody in the class you look at and say, man, there's just no way they're physically going to be ready. Um, so I, I think the group is, you know, I think we, we, we chose some good guys and some guys came in and really worked and de developed themselves um, before they came in and that had a really good first off season run here. Um, and then on the field, I mean, you know, as a whole, I mean, they, they make a lot of plays um, They get you excited. They make a lot of mistakes that, that you know, we're bringing back down to earth. That no, there's still a lot of coaching, a lot of work that's got to get done for them to become the players they can be. But I, it's it's a competitive group and, and they're hungry and, and they're working hard. Um, they've, done, they've all done a pretty nice job adapting to the college life and the college academic schedule, um, you know, which is such a big transition in the beginning. So I, you know, it's it's been an exciting group so far, and definitely will be be ready here in June to to get the rest of rest of that group here with us. Garen Emig, and then Josh Calloway. Lincoln, I apologize for not following up on this last time you were on. I hope you'll bear with me. I, I'm just trying to understand a little bit specifically about your um, your uh, aversion to the interconference deal, the transfer deal. When when you reference negatives, 
are you talking about, right, is your, is your worry about what coaches would do in, if, if those were loosened up or, you, or is that more about players? Well, I mean, what I would say, what I would say about the whole thing is, you know, I went through this and we went through this with Austin Kendall a few years ago. Um, I th- myself and most other college coaches for years and years have, have, have been against interconference transfers. The, the difference is right now in this climate, not a lot of people are willing to speak up on stuff like this. And that's just the, that's just what it is. Uh, the reason I eventually released Austin Kendall because was because at the end of the day, I believe I should not be able to restrict somebody that earned their degree that was a graduate. And at, I didn't like the fact that there was going to be a transfer in conference and be eligible. Get it to guys want to transfer. Anybody can transfer anywhere. But I didn't like that. But I felt at the end of the day, the guy had earned his degree and – you know, just like, a, I mean, that's, that's no different than a coach. You know, there ain't no coaches getting hired that don't have their degrees. If you've got your degree, if you've earned part of this thing as student athlete, and if you've done your part in the classroom and earned a degree, I think that should give you some rights that, that maybe other people shouldn't have, in my opinion. Um, again, it doesn't mean you can't go anywhere, but I just don't know my, my concerns on it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tampering, number one, by a, by a long ways. Uh, and then I think the other thing, too, is it's, it's going to just encourage more and more and more transfers. And we're already looking at a transfer portal saying there's too many guys in the portal. There's more transfer portal spots or more transfer portal people in there than there are scholarships out there. And this is going to this will do nothing but increase it. And it's uh, I just I don't I don't think it's. I don't think it's good for leagues. I, I don't think it's healthy that you could recruit a player. Um, and, you know, one, you know, once and then, and then a few months later, you're, you're competing against that player for three or four more times in their career um, and vice versa. I just don't, I don't think it's good for the college game. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. Now, if you're a graduate, again, to me, totally different story. So, and, and honestly, th- this one's been hard on me. I mean, honestly, like Austin's was, I mean, you know, Chandler Morris was, was in my room. Um, you know, I, I, admittedly get closer to those quarterbacks than probably anybody on the team just because I'm, I'm with them every single day and you know the human side of me deep down hell yeah I want to release Chandler I mean I do the same way I wanted to release Austin Kendall um, and I'm I got that inner battle of you know do I do I do what the human side of me wants to do because of course I want the kid to be able to play versus the side of me that believes that that just going along with that is not good for our game and and that's the the inner struggle that i've had with this and uh but you know that's where it stands you know i i again i i we'll see what happens with this rules wise there's a whole lot else that's that's gonna happen uh i get that um but it, this is i know some people agree with me some people disagree with me i've had uh more coaches than you can imagine, you know, hit me up and, and thank me uh, for, for stepping out for it. Because a lot of people believe, again, there's guys can transfer anywhere they want. It's not about us trying to restrict the ability to transfer, but it's trying to limit infra-conference transfers because there's, there's just the, – the tampering on that becomes – it's already a major issue right now. Let's just put it that way. It's a major issue, and everybody knows it. More, worse than worse than if a transfer goes to to a out of conference school. That's what you're what you're saying. That that element is there in conference. Oh, it, it'll it'll absolutely make it worse. I mean, it's already it's already bad that way. If if we we allow it in our conference, then it's uh, it's our thing. And right now, we have not we have not proven that we have the ability to stop it um, to to enforce those rules it's it's not it's not happening or what we're doing is not working so i just my confidence in us being able to enforce it uh and fix it is is very low right now thanks for your patience absolutely we've got time for one more josh calloway yeah lincoln i just wanted to ask about marcus major just i guess what you've seen from him early on in the spring and just how much growth he's capable of having uh you know going the next season specifically yeah, Marcus has a lot of ability, man. He he really does. And I and I said it a bunch at the end of last season. I was really proud of the kid and and how he, you know, kind of fought back, played some early for us, had some success, did some really nice things in the Texas game. Um, 
You know, Ramondre came back. TJ got kind of hot. We ended up playing those guys a little bit more through the middle to end. And, and I give Marks a lot of credit, man. A lot of young guys would have went in the tank, you know, started thinking about all kinds of stuff for me. Should I transfer this or that? All he did was stay back and work and work and work. And he got better, even though it wasn't necessarily on Saturdays on the TV screen. And, you know, all of a sudden here comes up to bowl gets his opportunity and, and was lights out uh, in the uh, in the Cotton Bowl against Florida. So I think gave him a lot of confidence. Uh, he's had a tremendous offseason. He's been able to trend some weight. I think he's running better. Uh, but he's a guy that has, I mean, you know, he's got every skill that you could want in a, an elite running back. And his confidence in his game has really come along with it. So excited about the year that he could have.